Okay, here we are in the third video on the command receiver, the ARC-5, the ANSCR 274N receivers. And between the last video and this one, I have attended a ham fest called Nearfest, and look what I picked up at the ham fest. Three more receivers. They were very expensive. I think I paid $10 each for them. Uh, they were in various state of disrepair um, with all kinds of things on the back. Look at this. This has got a relay of some kind and some other jacks mounted, a connector on the back. They all had many different types of, uh, of modifications. So I thought it was only fair that we go through the alignment of several of the different receivers and not just concentrate on that one uh, 80 meter 274. So what we have now is one of the low frequency receivers that covers from about uh, 200 kilohertz to 550 kilohertz. This is a navigational receiver. It's even got the inputs for a loop antenna. And then we have our 80 meter job and I've got a second 80 meter job I picked up so now I have two of those. And then finally a 40 meter receiver. And uh, this 40 meter receiver was quite a bear to get operating. Uh, it had uh, issues with the BFO where I had to actually take the BFO coil out and replace an internal bypass capacitor. Uh, it had extensive modifications. As a matter of fact, one of the mods was to have the RF and audio gain control separated. And I l actually left that modification in. It works quite well spending a lot of time on the 40 meter receiver so um, this is something new um, we'll be using as before the manuals for the ARC-5 or the 274 receivers when we do the alignment concentrate on the uh, following the instructions in the manual and you'll be in good shape there is one little thing you should know though uh, when they talk about selectivity with these receivers they're talking about really half the selectivity uh, the values that they give in the chart are off by one half because of the method they use to do the selectivity measurement. You start with a with a, a full signal and your RMS voltmeter with a 400 hertz modulated tone at 30% uh, at full scale and you go for half scale so you're going down 6 dB voltage and uh, you really are only measuring half of the selectivity and that's what they put in the book in reality you not only have that side but you have the other side so the selectivity measurements should be multiplied by two so if in the book it tells you that the ideal selectivity at a certain setting is two kilohertz that what they mean is you have a four kilohertz bandwidth in the receiver so don't get fooled by that Also, I said it was uh, uh, a very popular receiver to have uh, articles written about it. Um, here we are, this month's Electric Radio. There are no less than two articles on the command receivers. One of them about all of the various adapter boxes that go in these slots in the front. The whole article is about those adapter boxes. And that was written by Joe Long, WA2EJT. There's another article in here as well, which is even more interesting to us. It's called Selectivity Enhancement for the SCR274N and AN ARC-5 HF Receivers. And uh, in this particular modification, they take the IF transformers apart and separate the windings in the can as far as they will go in the can in order to improve the selectivity of the 80 meter receiver. Now we can't do this with the 40 meter receiver because the 40 meter receiver only has one coil in each IF can. So there's other ways we can get selectivity with the receivers and we're going to handle that a little later. On. First of all, we haven't mentioned this before, but what is this thing? Uh, this is really a, su a single conversion super heterodyne receiver. Okay, ju just like a, an AM table radio, uh, in order to reduce images, the IF frequencies change with each frequency band. 
So for instance, if we're looking at the, the 7 megahertz, uh, the one that tunes from 6 all the way up to 9 megahertz, that would be a BC455 or an R27, it's going to have an IF frequency that's higher. Uh, in this case, it's a 2.830 megahertz or 2830 kilohertz. That's what the IF frequency is. Now that has to be high enough frequency that the front end can reject it so we don't have a problem with images. As we go to a lower frequency like this 80 meter receiver, the IF uh, frequency goes down to 14, 15 kilohertz, 1,415 kilohertz. And down at the low frequency receiver where we've got 190 kilohertz to 550 kilohertz, the IF transformers can be as low as 85 kilohertz. It's much easier to get high Q and good selectivity at a lower frequency than it is at a higher frequency. So we will find that this low frequency receiver has very good selectivity. Beside being a superheterodyne, it's, it's a high side injection superheterodyne, meaning that the local oscillator operates on a frequency that is higher than the frequency of interest. So you'll find that on this 40 meter, uh, if we're tuned, for instance, to 6 megahertz, um, the local oscillator will be 2.830 megahertz higher so than that. So obviously if we want to do a tune-up on the receiver, we need to get to the all of the coils. And we've had the receivers all, all the way apart, so we need to uh, make sure that we leave this inner shield off because we're going to be inside the tuning mechanism of the receiver and we're going to be looking at these capacitors to see that they're not maxed out. We're going to need a few tools to do the alignment. First thing we're going to need is a small flat blade screwdriver to be able to adjust the, the IF transformers as well as the other trimmers. Some of these are hot so the metallic screwdriver will tend to make a detuning or a clicking noise. So if you had a, uh, a fine point plastic tuning tool to use on the transformers, it's a lot easier than using a metallic tool. Also we're going to need a little bit of test equipment. We are going to need an RF generator that's capable of handling uh, both the RF frequencies as well as the IF frequencies. Doesn't need to be a very fancy generator. It can be everything from one of those benchtop Heath kit jobs. Uh, I've got an $8 Hickok uh, generator that I'm using. I have an old HP 606 signal generator. These are all uh, excellent signal generators for doing the work. Having a frequency counter is almost essential so you can tell what your selectivity is. An RMS voltmeter is very important along with a load that simulates your headphones, like a 3.9K resistor, for instance. So we've got a, uh, a BC455B receiver. It's a little bit of an embarrassing story about this receiver. I saw the black crackle finish on it. And this is, you know, the ordinary uh, receiver that tunes all the way from 6 megahertz up to 9 megahertz. And um, I saw the black crackle and I assumed it was an ARC-5 receiver, so I got the information on the R27, ARC-5. I got the schematic, I got the, uh, you know, I got the manual and was able to start troubleshooting it. And uh, nothing was in the right place. The values of some of the resistors were different, the connections were different. I couldn't figure out what was going on until I looked at the back of the receiver and discovered it was actually a BC455B. It wasn't an ARC-5 at all, so it was a, a 274, and it had me completely fooled. So, again, uh, read the label and find out what kind of receiver you actually have before you start to troubleshoot. Uh, this receiver is alive. If I put my finger on the, on the thing, I can... I'm picking up signals. These things are so sensitive, your finger alone is, is like an antenna. So the first thing we want to do is see if the IF is, is aligned. And the way we're going to do that is with a signal generator. 
I've got this ancient signal generator. I paid $8 for this old Hickok signal generator. We're going to find out um, if the BFO is on frequency, and that'll tell us if the IF is aligned right. The thing tunes beautifully, and it seems to be calibrated, but that doesn't mean it's actually aligned properly. So, um, according to this uh, chart, at 2.830, uh, that's where the BFO should be, and that's the IF frequency. So let's we're going to take the we're going to take our the output of our generator, and we're going to apply it right to the uh, the cap of the mixer tube. Let's take a look at that. We're going to put it right on the cap of the mixer tube. Okay, and now we're going to tune our generator until we have a zero beat. Okay, let's put the BFO on. Okay, that's pretty close to zero beat. Let's read that frequency with our counter and see what frequency it's tuned to. And I'm reading 2825. So we are 5 kilohertz off. We're completely off. 5 kilohertz. But you know what? You, you can still tune it up 5 kilohertz off, readjust the local oscillator, readjust the IF cans, and the receiver won't know the difference. This is not the best generator in the world. But we're going to get there. Okay, close enough. The BFO adjustment, which is on the side of the receiver, until we get zero B. There we are. So now we know that the BFO is on the correct frequency. So the next step, after we have the BFO on the, on the correct frequency, is to get the IF lined up. We've now turned on the 400 cycle modulation on the old Hickok generator. And we can hear that coming through the IF. So now we need to peak that up. So we go to the first transformer and peak that up. Again, this frequency is 2830. Not bad. And we can put the caps back on the IF transformer. I might ask if we could actually do this operation using the antenna terminal rather than the grid of the mixer. And the answer is, yeah, we can. But as you can hear, it's a lot weaker. So you've got to turn the signal up from the generator. So we can do it. But you just have to turn the gain up. Again, we're not using the tuning. This is just the IF we're checking. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is go to the set points of the receiver. There's a low and a the high. The first set. Six set point for the BC455 is 8.9 megahertz. So this is our high end alignment. So let's go up to 8.9. 8.5, 8 8.6, 8 8.9. And the high end alignment, we're going to do C4D, C4E, and C2. Okay, and then we'll be doing the low end alignment on 6.1 megahertz, and that's simply aligning C9. It doesn't really matter what set you're talking about. Before you put that shield back on, what you would really like to see is the two outer capacitors that you can tune throw the shield. You'd like to see them around half mesh. Okay, we're putting the shield back on. To do this, you're going to have to remove this many parts so you can put the two screws in to get the shield back. Put in a few of the screws. You don't have to put them all in, but put the two in the back end. Put a couple up top, a couple on the sides. Now I'm letting it warm up. 
You should probably let it warm up for about uh, 15 or 20 minutes before you decide to do any alignment on the receiver. The other thing I mentioned, I thought this this one was an ARC-5 and it turned out to be a 274. That meant I had completely wrong tubes in the receiver. If I was paying more attention before I took all the tubes out to clean these sets, I would have seen that uh, tube lineup was for uh, a 274 and not an ARC-5 and it would have saved me a couple hours of troubleshooting. We are now uh, going to attempt an alignment on the receiver. Or at least we're going to check the alignment. We've already done the alignment and put the, uh, the inner shield back on. Uh, right now we've got the generator set for 8.9 or as close as I can get it with the, uh, with the old generator. And with the BFO on, we'll listen for a zero beat. Okay. That's darn close to the 8.9 line on the front of the uh, receiver. That's certainly very nice. And we know if we need to adjust that, it's right here. And now we've got the generator set for 6.1 megahertz or 6100 kilohertz. And again, we're right on the nose. So uh, it's very easy to get the alignment, the dial alignment set up on this receiver. Again, on the low side, we adjust with this capacitor over here. Good calibration on, on the entire dial now. Each receiver has a set point. For the uh, 3 to 6 megahertz receiver, the set points are 5.8 megahertz and 3.1 megahertz. And for the 453, you know, the, the low frequency 190 to 550 kilohertz, it's 520 kilohertz and 210 kilohertz. Okay, so reviewing, we don't want to put this cowl on, this, this inner shield on, until we have verified that all of the trimmers are double tuning. So what do we mean by double tuning? Let's just listen to some noise. This is the second RF tune circuit. I'm going to turn it clockwise. Okay, I'm about 90 degrees. At about 100 degrees, it, it peaked again. One peak, and now counterclockwise. And the second peak, just about 100 degrees apart, I got two peaks. That's called double peak tuning. That's what we want. We don't want to be at maximum. We don't want to be at minimum. Of course, some people are saying, Mike, I've never used a signal generator to tune up one of these receivers. I've always done it off the air, and it's worked just fine. And that's probably a fair enough statement. Now, when we're tuning over the air, we can do some basic checks like, uh, are we picking up? code in the low part of the 7 megahertz band where 40 meters is. And we are. And we can also look for a standard station like CHU Canada on 7850. So let's go up there. 7.5678 Okay. So we know that this receiver's dial is good. Now to peak it up, I normally like to peak it up on an AM station. Peaking the tremor. Okay. And then similarly we can do the IF cans. So there's an adequate uh, over-the-air tune on the receiver. Okay, let's do an alignment using the generator to start with. 
and I'm set up for uh, 7 megahertz and we've tuned the receiver to 7 megahertz um, I've got the level set so it's just basically quieting the receiver I didn't really pay too much attention to that level I just want to make sure I wasn't blasting the receiver or putting in a signal so low that I couldn't hear the tone so now we're going to switch over to the meter okay we're on the meter now and we're just going to peak that with the receiver uh, the idea is just to have the meter in a range that uh, where where you can see what you're doing for instance the first thing we want to see is that the trimmer is double peak tuning so and it looks like the trimmer is just double peaking so I'm I'm close to minimum capacity I can tell with this trimmer and the reason for that the reason the trimmer isn't double peak tuning perfectly is the receivers are made to work into a capacitive antenna that is a short wire uh, the uh, input capacitor is only adjusted by that trimmer and you may find that the trimmer has to be at minimum in order to resonate your antenna so the way we can remedy that is by uh, taking the plates on that first capacitor and spreading them out from the body of the of the uh, rotor and uh, you can see if you have the uh, the inner shield off you can see how to do that uh, the second thing we want to check is for double peak tuning on the the coil that's uh, that we can adjust on the receiver want to make sure we're getting a double peak on that pretty well aligned. Then you want to go down your IF transformers. Just peek them up, see, see how they look. Perfect. Here's the second one. Again, just about perfect. No improvement. There it is. So, again, we don't want to touch the two that adjust the oscillator. We only want to touch this one here and the IF cans. Okay, now that we have the uh, receiver tuned up, it might be nice to uh, see how selective this 40 meter receiver is. What kind of selectivity can we get out of the 40 meter? The way we're going to do that is by using a 400 cycle modulation on the uh, generator and we're going to hook up to an RMS voltmeter and look for the 6 dB point and we can adjust the output of the receiver to 1 volt this is also 0 dBV for this just tune the receiver make sure it's maximized and it is and we're reading a frequency of 697599 so now we tune and we want to go down 6 dB or to half a volt so we just go right to the half a volt and now we read the frequency again 696633 now a receiver that's that wide is not completely useless for CW but it's going to pick up a lot of signals in the passband Many a novice used a receiver like this as their first receiver, and it worked out okay. They just had to be really patient and use their ears. Well, it looks like I failed. I really tried to uh, to cover the receivers with three videos, but uh, we barely got through the 40 meter receiver, and we didn't get into the low frequency receiver, the Q fiber. We didn't get into the topic of selectivity. Um, we're still going to have to cover that and uh, that's going to take one more video so stand by for part four